Hello and welcome to the introduction to the Oxford textbook of public health palliative care. My name's uh, Dr. Julian Abel. I am one of the editors along with my colleague and friend, Alan. Uh, hi, I'm Alan Kelleher, friend and colleague of Julian Abel. I'm the uh, co-editor with Julian on the Oxford textbook of uh, public health palliative care. And together we're going to introduce um, the book as a whole. Um, and the first thing uh, I should say about public health palliative care is often people think of public health uh, in the way that universities uh, teach and research public health, in, and, and that is in terms of the surveillance sciences. People often talk about public health in terms of epidemiology or health services research or the bench sciences, or they think historically about public health, such as sewerage, um, clean water, uh, infectious disease, sexually transmissible diseases, those kinds of things. But in this particular case, and in our book, and within the field of palliative care, when we speak about public health palliative care, we're talking about the health promotion traditions, the traditions that emphasise the practice models, such as community development, or social ecology, or health policy, or services redesign, or public education, health and end of life literacy, they're the kinds of things that we emphasize. And conceptually, health promotion is also about a balance between health and well-being and illness and disease. And traditionally, palliative care has tended to emphasize the illness and disease side. And that's why the emphasis has been firmly and, and, and wholly largely on symptom management or symptom science. Uh, and of course, health promoting palliative care or public health uh, palliative care does have an emphasis on that as well. We're interested in the prevention and harm reduction and early intervention around the uh, experiences of illness and disease and some of the social morbidities such as loneliness or job loss or school refusal. Um, and stigma and social rejection. So we're, we're interested in that too, but we're also interested in health and well-being, which is the more counterintuitive aspect of palliative care. People often forget that there are positive things that are associated with living with a life-limiting illness or living with caregiving or living with grief and bereavement. Um, there's not just fear, but there's courage. There's not just loneliness, but there is love and growing intimacy. There is reminiscence and there is meaning making. And there's a whole, whole group of positive things that are associated with the social nature, not just of dying, but of caregiving and grief and loss. And so the promotion of those health and well-being aspects and experiences at the end of life go together to help with the prevention and harm reduction of the social comorbidities associated with those experiences. This book is about the promotion of those things together, the promotion of health and well-being, the development of the practice models that would help us do that, and the practice models that would help us with prevention, harm reduction, in, and early intervention in this new approach, the public health palliative care approach. And, and we also wanted to emphasize that uh, death, dying, loss and caregiving is uh, not restricted by disease or age. And uh, likewise, not by, by gender, by diversity. It is a question of social justice that we need to find a population based model that will help everyone. And, and also that it's not just about the person who uh, has got the illness. It's also about the caring network that, uh, of people who are affected by that. And, and that caring network extends into community. It extends into the, our places of work, it, our places of worship, our educational institutions. It extends everywhere. Death, dying, loss and caregiving is not just a professional issue, it's a social issue that involves all of us. Uh, we invited um, international uh, experts in the field, 
uh, who've done an incredible job in in writing different chapters. And the book is uh, organized into six sections. The first one is the case for public health palliative care, which looks at the, the social nature of dying and the essential components of it. We then have a section on basic concepts and theories, then basic practice methods, then population-based approaches, and finally, uh, evidence base and education and training. And we bring together for the first time uh, a very thorough and very complete look at the whole field and place it all together in, in one textbook. So we hope you enjoy it. We absolutely enjoyed reading the chapters and the authors did a fantastic job and uh, we'll see you at the end. <laughs>